Hey, welcome everyone to a very exciting unboxing for Limbo Eternal War. This Kickstarter that is from the Limbo Miniatures Company, who is very good at doing uh, miniatures, big resin miniatures, really pretty sculpts, and they decided to make a board game. And I was so interested in both sides of that, that I went all in. So, today we are going to unbox the all-in pledge. I'm going to get this box out of the way and start pulling out some of the items. Alright, so we start off with Limbo Eternal War, the core game, Kickstarter Essentials, or Kickstarter Stretch Goals, Exclusives. I don't know what KES means. K is definitely Kickstarter. And then there's stretch goals. So maybe it's Kickstarter exclusives. Alright. Starting out, we have two, what look like two core boxes here. Wrapped in plastic. And on the outside, they're very nondescript. It just says they're Limbo Eternal War. I'll tell you, they're from Australia where Limbo Miniatures is based out of. I'm going to slice along this plastic. I'll get this plastic off and we'll see what's inside the core box. So on the side here, there's a little one. On the side of this box over here, there's a little two. So I'm guessing that this is box one and that's box two. So let's see what's in box one. Right away, we can see we have a plastic liner keep everything in place. I'll also notice that all of the boxes look to be in really good condition. I don't see any cracked corners or anything like that. We'll see how the rest of these boxes come because the rest of the boxes are not at all the quality of this box. So this is definitely meant to like sit on a store shelf. So we have our rule book. Lots of art. Of the painted miniatures. Give you some ideas on how to paint them up. History of each miniature. Very cool. Where's the actual rules portion? I want to see how how hard the rules are. So now this is most likely one core box and then the other core box. So you get the the demons and then the the light side or the humans. So it looks like starting here, setting up a game. This is all setting the game. So then playing the game. It's actually a very short rule book. All the way to page 14. So only about 10 pages of rules. That's a pretty short rule book. We have battle map. Now it's double sided. And since it's huge, I'll just show you each side at a time. So not a lot of detail on this map. We see this little cave over here. There's some trees with and bushes with snow on them. But it's really hard to see that this is a purple box here. Let me zoom in. You can see that this is like a purple box. And then there's a red line, and then some purple, and then red, 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 and then purple over here. But that is a really hard to like pick out on this map. Let's see about on the other side if it's easier. On the other side, I don't see anything. This side has... It starts with... Like this under underworld sort of red lava that's moving into the greenery over here. As you go across, it goes all the way to this, what looks to be a pool or like some sort of temple. I don't know, I'd have to say that this seems to be a little bit weaker. Um, the quality of the board seems to be there. I'm not seeing any splits. Yeah, the quality of the board looks just fine.
but I would have to say that the artwork on that board is not what I've come to expect from this company. And we'll see how the artwork changes through the rest of it. All right, we're introduced to them right away. Here are all the minis. So I'm not gonna go through every single miniature because that'll take quite a while, but I will definitely pop out some of these heroes and then we'll pop out some of the big ones and you can see them as well. So the detail on these are fantastic. Right off the bat, the detail of these are fantastic. I I think that, wow, this even turns. That's pretty cool. I mean, I'd glue it in place once we started on it, but that's nice to be able to get that to get that out from her and be able to paint it and then you can tuck it in before you put her into the box um, and glue it in place. But look at the detail even on the base. So bringing it up real close, you can see detail is fantastic on these guys. Yeah, so this is all the the light side. There's some two-sided, really thick, they're very chunky um, altars. And of course, uh, the sheep. What is this for? Well, if you followed the Kickstarter, um, it was sort of like an extra thing thrown in there, which half of the people lost their mind and thought it was a stupid idea, but honestly, it's just a sheep. Doesn't really matter. It's okay. Nobody, nobody got hurt from it. Um, then we have the second box, almost, of of goodies here, in which we have a ton more minis. Now, what it looks like actually is that these are the demons. So you do have to have box one and box two because that is definitely a demon. That is holding on to some guy's head there. But you can see the detail on this is fantastic. I'm looking for mold lines. There's gotta be some. I can see the tiniest of gaps there. Little bit of a mold line running up his leg here and on the side of these runes or rock pillars. You can see it, it's just fantastic. The detail on the guy's head. This just, this looks amazing. This is, I'm very, first impressions, if the game isn't great, oh well, because the models are worth every penny. Yeah, the, this is, just absolutely fantastic. I will be seeing him again in a second for something else that I got. Alright, let's check out card quality here. We have two decks. I'll just open one because I don't really need to open both to make sure that they're both the same. That just, uh, that, that intrigues me on what's in the second box. The second box is probably just the big miniatures then. So, they are linen finished. And they are very thin, but they are linen finish. So I like my cards to be a little bit heavier stock than this. Just because um, when they're very thin, even one time playing, you pull up and it bends too much. And you can see just that little thing. I can, I've already bent the card. So that's the problem with very thin cards. It's, now they're easy to make right again. See, it's back to right. You just got to put a little bit of weight on it. I wanted to see the artwork as well. So the artwork on the back is the same as the box lid. And the artwork here is, I believe, the actual... Yeah, so these are the like an artist interpretation of the monsters. And I see a lot of reviewers say, 
oh, the card looks cluttered or the card looks, you know, it's full of information that you don't need. I'm, unfortunately, because this is just an unboxing, I don't know if I need all this information or not. But I see on the bottom, like, this one is very easy to read. It says huge. I've got a glare from the, maybe I'll turn off the light. Okay, there you go. So it says huge reach days, deadly two, flight, huge, pierce one, reach, wound. So those are all very easy to read, and it looks like they're all in like the same place. So when you're trying to figure out that portion of information, it's right there. I can read the font really easily that it says 12, Lord, Gluttony, Brute, Demon, Hunter, B, Sin. So these are all kind of the categories that they belong to, just like in a war game. And this game does work like a like a like a tabletop war game. Oops. And then there's his powers: Aura of Endless Hunger. Non-immune enemy characters adjacent to Gluttony cannot spend move points. Gruesome Feast. Attack three. Deadly two. Pierce one. And Predator. While attacking a bloodied character, Gluttony may reroll up to two attacks. Uh, two attack dice. And it looks like those say infinite, so they probably happen all the time. And then this is probably some sort of action that you have to take. And we've got them for all the characters in this box. So the artwork on them is very consistent. Um, on the bottom we have some green ones, which I think are the mercenaries. Blue for the light side, red for the dark side. I'm not sure exactly what they're called. Apologies if they're called something else, but it's like a demonic horde, and then one has angels in it, so I'm guessing that that's what it's supposed to be. Vorsheth, the Sire of Pain, for Forir, the Swift Breeze, Devite, the Fate Lord. So they all have the same sort of artwork. They're all, all of the drawings are the same sort of hand drawings of the characters in the in the game. We got these blue crystals, just regular plastic crystals. Very cool. I'm glad that they're not little tokens. We got a metal coin, very heavy. And looks like it has demonic and angelic, I guess. I mean, that's the opposite of demonic, but I'm not sure if that's what it is in this. Nice little bag, very tiny. Not sure exactly what it's used for, but it's very soft velvet. And then, the big chonky dice. They are very chonky. Yes, I'm saying it chonky, because we're on the internet. Why wouldn't I say chonky? Okay, so, whole bunch of them. 18, D6, and Neat thing about them is that they have a design, and it's the same design on all of them, on the six side. So if you needed some unique dice to play with, you definitely have some there. And then you've got four D10s here. And the D10s are not special. They don't have any sort of markings. They are a solid black, not see-through. But they're very heavy. Yeah, and they're a nice size. So these are definitely good quality dice. Alright, so we're on to our box number two. And that starts with a whole pack of tokens. This is a pretty sturdy pack. Let's pop them open. All right, so they want to fall out of the thing instantly. So they definitely are very thoroughly punched through. They're one-sided. They're thin, but they're not paper thin. They're definitely cardboard. They're not card stock. So they are sturdy, but they're pretty thin overall. They pop out nicely and pretty quickly. Let's see about the smaller tokens. Same with them. 
they're ready to punch out pretty much instantly. They leave some of the little tags on there, but they're not ripping, which means that they're perforated really well. They're all one-sided as well. Now let's look at one of these for their artwork. So as you can see, the artwork again, it's fine. Well, these are double-sided, but these are these are fine. These are nice. Um, it does look like they've reused artwork. These don't they they don't look like they're individually drawn five separate crates. It looks like it's one crate that they picked up and repositioned and placed again in a couple different spaces, which is not my favorite thing. I mean, I understand that they're trying to save time, but overall I think that they could do a little bit more. These squares are easier to see on this side. You can see on the red side, well, it's actually a little bit easier for you because of the way that the sunlight is working to make it look really bright and you can see the lines perfectly. In front of me, it looks more like this. Yeah, more like that, which makes it almost impossible to see unless I pick it up off the table and hold it away like this, which I'm not going to do, obviously, because I'd be playing the game. So, it it is a little disappointing on how rough these look in comparison, again, in comparison to the miniatures of the game, which are so spectacular. So you get quite a few, but not all of them are double-sided. And just lost one there. Again, they're falling out so easily, which is a nice thing. If you've ever had to force punch some of these um, cards out, and had them break in half on you or rip and shred definitely this is what you want so then we have a lot of tokens here that look like they are basically uh, status markers of some sort very cool very interested in learning the rules of this game alright let's get into these big giant minis over here So in this game, there's different classes of miniature. There's multiple types of, of minis, um, or I guess of units. Uh, there are your grunts, uh, which are whole bunches of soldiers. Then you have heroes, and then you have, you know, like boss level characters, and then you have your one big, huge person. So here is the huge person like that's just the shield here's my fist so you can tell this is giant and it's very light so it's printed in some light resin or plastic I'm not sure I'm not great at discovering what it is if it's resin or plastic but I can tell you this the detail on every piece of this mini let me see if I'm in macro Alright, so I switched it over to macro mode so we can get some up-close shots of the detail here. And you can see just how fantastic the detail is on these, these guys. These models are literally 50 models in one. You can see there's just skeletons all over the place on this guy. Now this one is actually, I think, deformed. This probably needs to be standing up, not leaning this far back. You see, she's like leaning all the way back. And most likely she's supposed to be standing up. So I will heat this one and see what happens with it. But probably just through the process of shipping. Now it's weird because it does go the whole way back there. So what might most likely happen is that they pulled this from the, from the, from the mold. 
and instantly put it in here and it just sort of sunk back slowly and it sunk back as far as it would go and that's why it fits in there but it shouldn't it should be standing up like this the base not like this it should be like that so now that we're in this macro mode let me show you again this guy demon leader and so you can see the detail on her the detail on this shield and the detail on the night thing that floats above her absolutely fantastic all right so I talked a second ago about the quality of packaging for the non core boxes this is what I'm talking about so I got this it just has a picture of an angel and a demon on it and it's just packing peanuts so I'm sure that the guys in here are safe, um, but now my only option is to display these guys. I can't put them into a box and let them live somewhere else, which is a little disappointing because I think one of the best things that can happen is when the core box is designed to hold all of the stretch goals. And so when you get all of your stretch goals, you put them all together. Now, I'm finding more and more bits in here. I'm also making a mess with these packing peanuts. But I'm going to dump all these peanuts out. Alright, went and dumped all the peanuts out to make sure that there weren't any more in there. And we have two gigantic models. Now, I get it. To be able to put these guys into... Well, how does how do these go in anyway? Could be a lot of reasons for that, namely because I don't know what I'm doing. But you can see this one is just massive, and these are heavier than any of the models in the core box. So they're very very thick. I mean, I really love the design of this this um, skirt here because you could just do so much with it. So much in, in terms of practicing your free hand. Now you can see these are not lined up straight. This is going to need to get heated up to be stretched out. So there is some problems in the, the manufacturing. They're not perfect. But I will tell you, in terms of mold lines, I haven't seen any. So this is the gluttony demon. He's got his tongues everywhere. He's holding on to dead bodies all over the place. Oh, he looks fantastic as all get out. Be a very easy one to paint, I think, as well. I mean, you can have a lot of fun with it, but in terms of just the fact that there's so much space available, I think he'd be really easy and really fun to paint up. And then put him on display as a big, hulking, disgusting beast. I'll figure out how to get those wings on later. Alright. Our next one. So this one comes with a little bit of a plastic insert. We get the angel coming down, wrapping around this column. She's in flight. It's a very unique way to do it. You can see that there's nothing connecting on the bottom here. Alright, so here we have what looks to be some sort of dwarf character. He's got his big axe. He's standing on the head of a demon. With a really cool knight. An archer. And here we have a small demon ripping apart a human very cool 
See anything below it? Nope. All right, so that was everything from the stretch goals and the Kickstarter exclusives. Now we're moving on to the all-in pledge. So this is what came in the all-in portion of the game. So, a couple of things going on here. Number one, we have again, big giant miniatures. Huge. We have some smaller miniatures. Those ones, and here's one that's sort of in between. Giant and small. And then we have this, which is, I believe, a resin version A resin version of Wong. Wong is a panda that is a martial arts master panda. All of his parts are in here. He has a little stand that is a rock here. Looks like he has some um, resin stuck to him here. Have to take that off. But yeah, he stands up on here. Again, the detail and quality of him is perfect. Why does he come like this? It was a Kickstarter thing. It's just the way it is. <laughs> it's a little strange. It's all over the place, but here we are. I don't remember what's in here, so I will look. Looks like we have a Limbo base. We have... And here she is. And she's got a whole bunch of little teeny tiny parts that go with it as well. So that's what she is. So why do you have to build the two of them? I do not know. But I can go back through all my Kickstarter messages and find out. One of the final things in this box is the huge pack of D10 here that are the colored ones, the color coded ones. So you have what looks to be six red and six black and they have the same same thing a special symbol but instead of just having the, the generic symbol you've got a special one for the red side and one for the blue side and these are great heavy dice. I really like these dice. All right, so that's everything that's in the Limbo Miniatures box, uh, what you get in the all-in pledge, but I did add one more thing to that, and that's what's in this box. Now, this box looks a little beat to heck here, so hopefully the very fragile parts inside are well protected. Again, we get packing peanuts, just there, done, problem solved. And it looks like the model is really well wrapped up here. So remember I said earlier, you would see that one character again. We have a couple pieces here. First, here is the base. So Limbo, as I said before, is a miniatures company. And what they decided to do was make a game but other than just having the game they also offered some of these sculpts in a 75 mil size so here is the sculpt that I bought so these were pretty expensive so I didn't want a ton of them but I did want a 75 millimeter of these so this guy goes on here fits perfectly and then he's got like six arms so there's all these other pieces that go with it his arm here he's got another arm here he's got a bag of arms here so a bunch of arms that go on there the 
there you go. What's up everyone? I just finished recording the video and I noticed a couple of things afterwards and I wanted to clarify those. Number one, none of those miniatures that came piecemeal and I had to put together came with instructions. I think that is a very, very poor thing to do. I checked the booklet, uh, the instruction booklet, seeing if there was anything in there that would help me build them. Other than seeing a picture of the finished model, it didn't really help. Um, and also, the rulebook in general uh, was pretty underwhelming. Now, if I do a full review, I'll go through all of the parts. But as I skim through the manual trying to find instructions on how to build these models, uh, I realized that it was laid out quite poorly. So, including on these first first uh, impressions, I want to add to that that the uh, instruction booklet is not 100%. So I think the scopes look amazing. I think the whole package as a whole looks really awesome. I think that the cards being linen finished makes up for their thinness. I think that the uh, miniatures are definitely the strong point here. I don't know how good the game is. Um, what was really awesome about this Kickstarter is that the creator actually put it into Tabletop Simulator and allowed you to go in and play it. Um, I find tabletop simulator really really hard to use so I never actually played it um, So I'll see after I play this game how good it is and if you want to see a review of the game and how it plays uh, Definitely leave a like a comment subscribe down below um, I most likely will do one if there's interest in them. Um, I usually don't Review it if nobody seems to care about the unboxing and why would anyone care about the review? But definitely let me know what you think down below. Uh, do you agree with me that the artwork on the board is the weak point and that the miniatures are by far better than 99%? I would say 99% of the games that are out there. I think that these miniatures are really on a level of their own when it comes to board game miniatures. There are some things that need to be fixed. Sure, that's what happens in mass production. That's okay, it's easy to fix. But otherwise, I am very, very excited and very happy with this, with this box of plastic. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Hey, thanks for watching my videos. I greatly appreciate it. If you wanna see more, make sure you subscribe so that you'll be alerted every time I release a new one. If you wanna see two that have already been produced, and were hand-picked by these two crazy kids, then you can click on the links here on the screen now. Otherwise, thank you so much for sticking around, and I'll see you all next time.